Seda! Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's wonderful to talk to you all this way. I know this is a bit different than how our classroom usually meets, but I <clears throat> wanted to give you a chance to um, learn this, aside from just seeing the videos that you're kind of used to. Welcome to our live Google Classroom of sorts. This morning, I want to talk about finding the area of trapezoids and parallelograms. Now, if you look over here at the board, you of course see the menu for our IXL. Now today we're gonna to be referencing IXL standard FF4, okay? We're gonna be looking at how to get the area of parallelograms and how to get the area of trapezoids. Now I've got those formulas right here. A parallelogram, you simply have to do base times height. Now let's talk about why. Parallelogram, it looks like that uh, rectangle um, that's been kind of leaned over, right? We're used to seeing this. And of course, when we see a rectangle, we know to simply do our length times our width. Right? And it's just two measurements. Well, a parallelogram is the same thing, okay? So if we were to take these and we were to lean them over, now notice, nothing has really changed about the shape. It's almost like the walls got weak and we were almost pushing it down. This is still a rectangle. Now you might say, oh, no, 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 no. That's not a rectangle, but yes, it is. Imagine, if I were to take my scissors and I were to cut the corner of this parallelogram off, let's say we cut it right here. Now you know what that is. That's what we refer to as a height line. See, the height. If I were to cut this off and take this triangle and move it over here, watch what happens. Aha, now what do you notice? It's a rectangle, length times width. So when we have a parallelogram, which once again, by the way, is two triangles. It's just two triangles. Parallelogram. We divide that in half. What do you notice? Base times height cut in half. Base times height cut in half. Well now, since we have two triangles, we don't have to cut anything in half. All we simply have to do is take the base and multiply it by the height. That's it. So if you had a parallelogram that had a base of four centimeters and it had a height of three centimeters, well, four times three is 12. And so then that's your final answer, 12 centimeters squared because you just simply took your base and your height. No cutting in half because we have a quadrilateral. Remember, a quadrilateral is that figure with one, two, three, four sides. Let's take a look at IXL. We'll click here on FF4, and we see that it's gonna give us some of those parallelograms and some of those trapezoids. So right here off the bat, here's a parallelogram. Now it might be hard to see on the camera, so I'm gonna talk you through, but you have a base of 10 yards. You have a height of eight yards. So what's 10 times eight? That's right, 80. And so ultimately we would have 80 square yards. Now remember, we're squaring these because we're dealing with two dimensions, base and height. So as you are used to with your IXL, and of course, as you're used to with my glitchy smart board, we come over here, we put in eight O. Boom, good work, that is correct. We see another one. We see a base of seven miles. We see a height of five miles. Seven times five, 35. 35 square miles. Now, one last thing I wanna check on because we don't wanna get used to just, okay, here's my base, here's my height. What if we have missing factors? We can do that. What if we had a parallelogram that had an area Let's say the area was uh, 100, 
44 inches squared. And we know that we have a height of 12 inches. So the question then becomes, okay, so what is X? What's the base? Well, in that case, take what you know and divide it by what you know. We take 144, we divide it by 12. 12 goes into 14 one time. 14 minus 12 is 12. That gives us two, we drop our four. 12 goes into 24 two times. Two times 12 is 24. 24 minus 24 is zero, which means that X equals 12 inches. Parallelograms, friends, that's all it takes. Base times height. No cutting in half because it's a quadrilateral. Now let's move on and let's talk about this shape. This is known as a trapezoid. Now trapezoids have a little bit more to the process <clears throat> but, once again, as we talk about the process, and as I show you, I think you're going to find it's pretty straightforward math, too. Now, the first thing you'll notice about a trapezoid is they're not always made the same. You have a wide base. You have a much more narrow top. We can flip this over. It doesn't make any difference because what we'll be doing is, for the purposes of this, we'll be referring to the bottom as base one, and we'll be referring to the top as base two. But once again, from the formula, you'll be able to see you can do it either way that you like. So ultimately, you take base one and you add it to base two. So in the following thing here, in this trapezoid, we have a base one of seven meters. We have a base two of four meters. Now you might say, Johnson, why would they call them both bases if one is on the bottom and one is on the top? Well, because remember, it doesn't matter how you flip this shape. You can have it standing like this, and that can be base one, base two, or flip it if you like. We can make this four meters and this seven meters. This can be base one, and this can be base two. Because of the commutative property of multiplication and the commutative property of addition, it's not going to matter. So you're good either way. So base 1 plus base 2. Well, 7 plus 4 is 11. So we put 11 up here. Now, you know that when I put something over 2, that means you got to divide it. you got to cut it in half. So we've got 11 over 2. Well, how many times... Is two go into 11. That's right, five and a half. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and then half of one is 11. So we've got five and a half. Now you could represent that a couple ways. You could do five and a half, or you could do 5.5. Now, once you've done that, once you've said base one plus base two, and then you've divided it in half, you multiply by the height. Well, for this height, we see it has a height of 10 meters. So now we're gonna take our five and a half or our 5.5 and multiply it by 10. Sweet, 5.5 times 10, zero times five, zero times five. Placeholder, one times five is five. 1 times 5 is 5. I had this decimal point. I moved it out 1. I brought it back in. We should have 55 square meters. Let's take a look. We put in 5, 5. Yay! Here's another one for us to work out. Let's do this one on the board. Okay. We have a trapezoid. It's base one is 10 millimeters. It's base two is four millimeters. It has a height of six millimeters. Now let's just go through our process step by step, okay? Base one plus base two. What is 10 plus four? 14, that's right. 
And now we take our 14 and we divide that by two. How many times will two go into 14? You got it, seven times. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, seven times. Now you take that and you multiply it by the height. And remember, we're using this dot for multiplication because when you start getting into using these letters, the X's can get confusing. So we're using the dot here. Remember, we could also just simply put them side by side. This could be seven times H. This could be seven H. Both are the same. But ultimately, you're gonna have seven times our height of six. And that comes out to 42 millimeters squared. Let's put it in. Boom. So you guys are the best. You can take care of this. Here's another parallelogram. Remember, 10 times 9, 90. We don't cut it in half. Yay. 10 plus 3, 13. 13 divided by 2, 6 and a half. 6 and a half times 18. Let's roll through that. 6.5 times 18. 8 times 5 is 40. Carry our 4. 8 times 6 is 48. 48 plus 4 makes 52. Placeholder. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 6 is 6. 0, 7, 11. Had our decimal point. We brought it out. We come back down. We put it right into place. We should have 117 yards squared. Because remember, even though we got these things, we're still just dealing with two things, base and height, so we're still squaring. So, 117. And there you go. It. How to find the area of a parallelogram, how to find the area of a trapezoid. It has been my pleasure seeing you guys. The only thing that would make this better is to look out on the tables and actually see all of you all sitting there. And then you could totally crack on me for my shirt. But don't do that because otherwise a Vince Sevenfold will come and get you. And you all know you love my Louisville hat and you miss all my card stuff. Don't lie. Go cards. Can't wait to see you all soon in another video lesson. Have a great day.